right, so example one here we have x plus 4 divided by 3 plus 5x plus 2 divided by 4 equals 5. And the whole new part of this is this equals sum here. But we're going to approach this the same way we have previously and we're just going to focus on this part here of the sum. So how I focus on this is I have a fraction plus another fraction and how I add two fractions is my get my common denominator. So in this case my denominators are 3 and 4 so my common denominator, a number that they both go into, is 12. And I will put equals 5 here. And I'm going to follow the same process that I did. So I look and I say 3 goes into 12 four times and it's 4 multiplied by whatever's on top and in this case it is x plus 4. Then look at my sign in the centre and I have here a plus so it's going to be plus and again to my second denominator which is 4. How many times does 4 go into 12? It goes in three times and then I multiply that by whatever's on top which in this case is 5x plus 2. Alright, so that becomes my first step. Step two then, I'm obviously going to work out my top line, break it down. So on the bottom I will still have 12 remaining and I still have will equal 5 and I'm just going to work out my brackets. So 4 multiplied by x will give me 4x. 4 multiplied by 4 gives me plus 16. Minus, oh sorry, plus 3 times 5x gives me plus 15x. And then the last one, I have plus 3 multiplied by plus 2, which gives me plus 6. So at this point, once I've worked out my brackets, I now need to group the top line. So bring my x's together, my numbers together, and simplify it. So I have a 4x and a plus 15x a plus 16 and a plus 6. So I can simplify that down. Let's make this a little bit smaller. So I have still have 12 as my common denominator. 4x and 15x will give me 19x. And then I have a plus 16 and a plus 6, which will give me plus 22. And that all equals 5. And now at this point, I can just go back to what I learned in first year and that the presence of the equals is all about balancing. So we ideally want to have x on one side, everything else on the other, but this is a fraction, 19x plus 22 divided by 12. And the way we get rid of a fraction is to get rid of the bottom number here. And here we have a divide by 12. So remember with balancing, the only way I can get rid of a divide by 12 is if I multiply by 12. But what I do to one side, I must do to the other. So I place a put, multiply by 12 on that. What happens is my divide by 12 and my multiply by 12 cancel. And I'm now left with what we call a linear equation in the sense that it is completely straight. There are no fractions here. So I now have 19x plus 22 is equal to, remember we had five, but we now had the multiply by 12 5 tens are 55, 2s are 10, so that will be equal to 60. And at this point, you'll recognise it all from first year. So again, we want our x's on one side, our numbers on the other. I have a plus 22, so to get rid of it, I'm going to have minus 22 and minus 22. Again, just make that a bit smaller so we can fit it all in. The plus 22 and the minus 22 cancel. And we're left with 19x equals 60 minus 22 is 38 and again we're not looking for 19x we're looking for x but this 19x the 19 is attached to the x which means that really is 19 multiplied by x so if I want to get rid of the multiplied by 19 I need to divide by 19 but what I do to one side I must do to the other and we will see that the multiplied by 19 and the divide by 19, they cancel. And I'm left with just x on this side is equal to 38 divided by 19 will give me 2. So we've worked that down the whole way. And so x plus 4 divided by 3 plus 5x plus 2 
divided by 4 equals 5. The correct answer is x equals 2. So our steps are number 1, find your common denominator and divide into it. Number 2, simplify out the brackets. Number 3, group what you can. And number 4, balance to find x. Okay, looking now to example two, and I'll just get rid of these two dots, they shouldn't really be there. Okay, so we have y divided by three minus two y minus one divided by five equals minus one divided by three. So again, what we're going to do here is we're going to focus on this part here that we've already worked out. And um, once we get that uh, broken down to a simpler fraction, we're then going to solve the equation. So looking at this, I'm going to, I have y minus, y divided by 3, which is a fraction, minus 2y minus 1 uh, divided by 5, which is another fraction. And how I subtract two fractions is I find a common denominator. So in this case, uh, a number that they both go into would be 15. And I'm going to put that equals minus 1 third. Um, so I am not forgetting about the minus 1 third, we're just going to focus on it later. So we follow the same process. 3 goes into 15 five times, and it's 5 multiplied by whatever's on top, which in this case is the y. And then remember your sign, it's super important here. Minus 5 goes into 15 three times, so it's now going to be minus 3 times whatever's on top, and in this case we have 2y minus 1. Alright, I'm now going to simplify this top line here. Um, so we now have 5y. And then we have minus 3 times 2y is minus 6y. Minus 3 times minus 1 is plus 3. All over 15 equals minus 1 third. Okay, at this point here, I'm going to group what I can, make it a little bit easier for me to work with. So I have 5y minus 6y plus 3. So 5y minus 6y is minus y plus 3, all divided by 15 equals minus 1 over 3. Now, what we are met with here at this point is minus y plus 3 divided by 15 is equal to minus 1 over 3. And if you get your equation arranged in a way that has one thing on this side or one expression on this side and one expression on this side and an equals in the middle, you can actually do a thing called cross multiplication. And you may have met this somewhere before. And it really means that we can work this out, make it a linear, make, make it have no fractions very easily. We basically multiply y my, minus y plus 3, we multiply that by the 3 here. And we let that equal the minus 1 multiplied by the 15. And that's essentially what cross multiplication is all about. So I'm going to show you now what I mean. So w minus y plus 3 multiplied by 3. So we can write that as 3 times minus y plus 3. Okay, and you can see where I got the 3 and the minus y plus 3. And we can say that that is equal to minus 1 times 15. Minus 1 times 15. And that has actually sorted out all of our problems with regards to having loads of fractions there. Now we could balance this, there would be nothing wrong with that, but this is just a nice quick way to do it. You can only do it if you have one expression on this side and one expression on this side. So for instance, if I had a x plus one third is equal to four, I can't do that because I have one expression on this side and here I have two expressions. So I can't cross multiply if that's the case. You can only do it if you've got one thing on this side and one thing on this side. And in this case I have a fraction and in this case I also have a fraction. Okay, so then you've obviously seen this before. You've got your brackets and we work out our brackets. 
3 times minus y is going to give me minus 3y. 3 times 3 is going to give me plus 9 equals minus 1 times 15 is going to give me minus 15. And at this point, you've been looking at this since first year, you're going to balance. You want, obviously, to find out what y is. So you want y on one side, everything else on the other. You're going to balance as so. So the first thing I'm going to get rid of is this plus 9. So I'll have a minus 9 and a minus 9. And they're gone. And I'm now left with minus 3y equals minus 15 minus 9 is minus 24. And then, obviously, I'm not really interested in finding out what minus 3y is. I want to find out just what y is. So this is a minus 3 multiplied by y. So the only way I can get rid of it is if I divide by minus 3. But what I do to one side, I must do to the other. And so my minus 3 and my minus 3 cancel on this side. And I'm left with y is equal to. And on the right hand side here, I have minus 24 divided by minus 3. So again, if you're dividing a minus divided by a minus gives you a plus, And 3 goes into 24 eight times. So your answer is y is equal to 8. So again, work out the first part. Get that down to one expression if you can. If you're in a situation where you have one thing here and one thing here, you can cross multiply. That gives us this part here. You work out your brackets and then you balance to get the y on one side, everything else on the other. Now, sometimes you're asked to test your answer. So to see if your answer works. So we're going to test that y is equal to eight to make sure it works. So we're going to write down the original equation here, which was y divided by three minus two y minus one all divided by five equals minus one divided by three. And we're now saying that y is equal to eight. So that would be eight over three minus two times eight minus one all over five equals minus one third. And so you can type all of this into your calculator to see if you get minus one third on this side, which you should. And you can say, well, minus one third equals minus one third. So therefore, my answer is correct. So that's just if you're asked to test an answer. So tonight's homework is the learning check. You're going to do for me question one, question two, and then you're going to test your answers to see if they satisfy. And I'll see everybody on Monday.